Our next guest is quite comfy with what you and I might think are creepy. Yeah, creepy crawlers, that is. In fact, he has made a career out of studying the little critters. So you can probably imagine his excitement with the impending cicada palooza, as we've been talking about <laughs> on the show. So we would like to introduce you to Dr. Brian Kunkel. Now, okay, stay with me here. Dr. Kunkel is an extension specialist of ornamentals integrated pest management at the University of Delaware. You got all that, Jimmy? Got it. All right, good. <laughs> Dr. Gungle, now before we chat about cicadas, we have to know what inspired you to study bugs? Uh, they make great fishing bait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dr. Gungle, I gotta tell you, that is not the answer I expected from you. Nope. <laughs> so of, of everything, I mean, obviously this is a science. You know a lot of things that, that neither Katie nor I know. Do you have a favorite bug? So I, the uh, beetles are my favorite group of insects. Um, and probably of those, uh, either ground beetles or weevils. Do you feel bad? Um, kill, like, can you kill a fly or do you get upset about it? I generally leave well enough alone. But so what my wife thinks is funny is I will uh, give them forewarning before I kill them. <laughs> like if they're flying around me or whatever, like, look, if you bother me, I will kill you. Wow. And I usually am then left alone. Um, because so, when they do land on me, I'll, I'm able to quick enough to kill them by hand. Wow. Uh, or like if they're nearby, I'll be able to swat them and they die. And I guess enough of them realize, well, not really, but <laughs> oh, okay. at least so, anthropomorphically. Well, let, let me ask you this. There's there's a lot of nature people that go out and they eat bugs. How do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, I've eaten. I can't even tell you how many insects I've eaten. Really? Really? I mean, so for example, yeah. So like, there's an insect called a pecan weevil. Uh, most people would never think of even eating one of those. Well, I ate one. It was fine. It tasted, believe <laughs> it or not, like pecan. So. What? Okay. Really? When you eat them, are they alive ever? Yeah. Uh, well, the pecan weevils were. I hadn't been cooked or anything. Oh, um, well, you probably I've uh, had uh, mealworms, um, Bella stomatids, which are giant water bugs. I've had those. I've had um, silkworm pupae, uh, huh. lady beetles. I've eaten those. Wow. One of these days, we all got to go out and, and just eat some bugs. Let me ask you this. What, what do you think would be the most fascinating thing about bugs that, that somebody could learn? So my original interest was that they were fishing bait, but what I found really cool was that, um, and my integrated pest management utilizes those arthropods and insects that are beneficial, mm -hmm. or meaning they are predatory upon pestiferous arthropods, okay. um, and sometimes other arthropods uh, or insects that are just incidental, but the fact that they will exhibit similar behaviors as our larger, more um, favored or appreciated predators, for example, raptors. There's a fly yeah. that acts very much like an ambush predator that some of our mammal predators do. They exhibit similar behaviors. Get out of um, wow. And that was how I was first, yeah, and that's how I was first introduced into entomology, was doing a study with uh, they're called robber flies. They'll, they're a predatory fly that has piercing, sucking mouth parts, and uh, it hangs out near flowers waiting for insects to come in. Really? Um, and it jumps out. It's like a middle linebacker. It tackles them <laughs> midair, wrestles them to the ground, and stabs them with his mouth part, injecting a paralytic enzyme in there. Oh, my gosh. Night. Yeah, so... So it was really cool. And uh, I mean, you know, you have, you know, some of your larger cats will sit and wait for things to come by, like a mountain lion will sit on frequently traveled paths for their prey items to come by and they jump out and grab them. So similarly, this fly does the same thing. It's just waiting for wow. its prey to come to flowers. Unreal. Okay, so, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> We want to know more about cicadas. Are, are you ready to talk to us for a few minutes about cicadas? I will try to share what I know about cicadas. 
Excellent. All right, Dr. Brian. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fine. All right, Dr. Brian Kunkel will be right back with me here in just a second. We're going to talk to Ada Palooza. Dr. Brian Kunkel has been keeping us quite entertained this afternoon. Now, to put it simply, Dr. Kunkel is an expert in insects, and he's a professor at the University of Delaware. Now, here's the deal, Dr. Kunkel. we got to talk cicadas. We might be in the bullseye for an invasion? Uh, a mass emergence for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I... So I moved here in 2006, so I wasn't here for the last uh, large emergence, and I was told it was in 2004. So it matches up 17 years to be 2021. So we're going to be inundated with cicadas everywhere, at least from what I understand in the northern half of the state. Uh, okay, I so heard that the populations weren't as bad um, once you got into Kent and Sussex counties. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me let me ask you this because it, it seems like every year we're hearing, oh, it's going to be the biggest emergence ever this year. Um, how is this? Uh, are there like? Did I see somewhere that there's like different broods? Yeah, so there's multiple broods. Um, some of them are on 13 year cycles. Some of them are on 17 year cycles. Um, but this one is known as like the Great Eastern Brood. It's brood 10, um, and it is one of the largest broods that are out there. Wow. Wow. Okay, so... At least from my understanding. Now, in our last segment, you talked about the, the insects that fire you up. Is a cicada an insect that you would, you know, get excited about and study? Uh, the cicadas, they when they come out, especially in this sort of number that we're going to see uh, this May... Um, in terms of mature trees, they rarely do much damage overall to the overall health of the tree. Um, you will have flagging, meaning some of the thinner branches, the ends will kind of break off or break and they'll kind of hang down. So it'll look like, like a hanging flag, which is how it gets its name, flagging. But on trees that have been planted recently, meaning within the past year or two, they're going to be a little more susceptible. Um, so, Dr. Kunkel, so, is there a purpose for the yep. cicada? Uh, they, like most insects, they provide an ecological function. So it's going to be a, a nice uh, source of food for birds because they're going to be highly abundant. Uh, I use them for fishing. There will be a lot of uh, other insects. We'll try to take advantage of them. Um, they're a little large for most of them, but you'll have some that will try to take advantage of them, I'm sure. Uh, but birds definitely will eat them. You'll probably have uh, small mammals, such as maybe uh, mice. They sometimes will eat insect protein if they come across a small insect. Um, right. So with the, in the number of cicadas we're going to have, there's going to be a number of wildlife that will feed on those. Uh, now, it's good, uh, insects are really good, in, a good proteinaceous source. Now, speaking of feeding on cicadas, Dr. Kunkel, have mm -hmm. you ever eaten a cicada? I have not eaten a cicada. Ah. Um, where, I, where I grew up, though, there was, um, when I was young, there was people putting them on pizza, using them as a pizza topping. I did not get a chance to try that, but... Um, I've heard of people eating cicadas. Wow. Dr. Kunkel, when, when you and Katie and I go out to eat, we are not having cicada pizza. <laughs> I just want to make that perfectly clear right here, right now. Okay, no cicada pizza, gotcha. No cicada pizza. <laughs> so when is all this going to happen? When when are we looking for this big cicada invasion? So they'll probably, we'll probably start getting some emergence, I would guess, in mid-May would be a time frame I would expect that we'd start to see them. Some of it's going to depend on temperatures. Uh, how, like, if we mm -hmm. have a really cool spring, it'll be later. Whereas if we have a really hot one, it may be a little warmer. All right. Maybe around as early as maybe Mother's Day, we will start seeing it. But I think the larger portion of the population will be around the end of May. Just what uh, most mothers probably want for Mother's Day is to see cicadas all, all over the place, right? Cicadas, yeah, perfect. all over. <laughs> right, right. And, and so the males produce the song, and the females are like, you know, if I like it, I'll come to you. If not, well, you just out of luck. But uh, one of the things I always found is uh, interesting is, like, if you mow your lawn, 
um, sometimes those cicadas will be attracted to the sound of your mower. <laughs> and so you may be bombardiered by cicadas thinking you're uh, enticing them forward. Yay! Oh, oh my! Oh, wow. <laughs> that is something. Yeah. I had, when Not I was really couple. young, I had a car that it was really loud. I couldn't drive when we had our cicada emergency. I couldn't drive with my windows down because they'd fly <laughs> towards my <laughs> car and try to get into the car. <laughs> that oh, wild. my goodness. Dr. Brian Kunkel yeah. with the University yeah. of Delaware. Thank you so much for talking to us this afternoon. Sure, sure. You all have a good rest of your week. Take care, and you too. <laughs>